Hey, in this video I want to show you how to make a chicken crown which we will stuff underneath the skin and it makes an absolutely amazing meal for a dinner party or a fancy sort of dish way to cook a chicken. So first I want to show you how to debone a chicken and you can learn that in my online courses. Um, but what you see here now where that stretchy skin is right on the top, the skin really stretches, that's where you cut in. Then you scrape the, along the bone, I'll show you that again. And then you just snap the knuckle. So again, here we go. You look at that skin, which really stretches right on the top. You cut in right next to the breast. So between breast and wing muscles, you cut in. You scrape along, you flip the knuckle out of it, or you flip it over, and then go right at the end. And that's what you call Frenching a bone. So the next thing with the leg, you do the same thing. You move all the skin towards the breast because if you just cut the right down there, you will literally lose a lot of skin. And later on, when you want to stuff the crown, you will lose obviously skin. Then just scrape along. There's no cutting needed. What you do, you just sort of guide your blade along the bone and the leg will just fall off naturally. So show that once again. On the other side, so you just move all the skin towards the breast. Make an incision as close to the leg as you can, as you see here. Cut the skin, don't worry about cutting any of the muscles or any of the meat, you just cut the skin and keep running your knife along. You know, one side of your blade, there should be just bone and the other side you will see there's the legs and the muscles. It goes through the knuckle, but I teach you that all much more in depth in my online courses. So that is your crown. So the next thing is you need to remove the bottom or the end bit of those bones by just sort of cutting in, twisting it around. And there's your chicken crown. That's how easy it is and that's how quick it is. And if you try that a few times, you will succeed every time. So the next thing is the wishbone. And the wishbone is obviously something that's a bit harder to get out. There's other ways to get it out, but when you crown it, you obviously need to keep the breast intact. So just get your knife under the wishbone, cut along until you come to the end where the neck of the chicken is, and then just try to loosen that bone without cutting around too much or cutting too much into the meat. Just loosen it at the end where it attaches itself to that area of the neck of the chicken, and then go under the bone and cut upwards. And here we go. There is your wishbone. And that's pretty simple if you do it a few times. So show that once again. So you just cut underneath the wishbone. Do that on the other side as well. And if you loosen it at the neck area, it's basically pretty flexible and it's not sitting in there anymore, sort of really static. And it is something that you have to sort of fiddle a bit around. Once you did it two or three times, you'll find it's pretty easy. And then just basically pull the wishbone out. And here we go. So the next thing I'm going to show you is how to make the chicken mousse that we will stuff underneath the skin. And for that, if you don't have a very good blender, you just need to go through your chicken. Best use a chicken breast because it doesn't have much connective tissue or tendons. And remove all the silver skins and remove all that stuff that you know, if you have a blender that's not so good, that might not blend those pieces of meat up. So just remove all the silver skin. Silver skin is also known as connective tissue. It's that stuff which basically is the extension of a muscle and makes the muscles move. So that's always very tough and very sort of chewy. It, if you cook it for long enough, it obviously will tenderize. But in our chicken mousse today, we want to remove all of that because that could literally harden your chicken mousse later on. So as you see here, I just need to go through it. There's not much in a chicken breast and that's why you can do that. Here we go, the chicken fillets. You will find there's a sort of a piece of connective tissue right going halfway through. So you can literally just go there and push to the side like you see here. So just scrape it off, then cut the chicken meat really, really fine. And then make sure that it's really, really cold as well. So if you Blend it, maybe put it in the freezer for half an hour beforehand. And that's simply for the one reason only that the chicken later on doesn't break during the blending. 
and then add an egg to it and then blend that really really fine salt and pepper of course as well and then you can add any flavoring to the chicken mousse you want today i will add some morels you could use truffles it could be just herbs it could be pine nuts and all sorts of other things so here you have the recipe blend it and blend it really fine and the only thing you need to make sure is that everything is pretty pretty cold so even the blender bowl i did put in the freezer for half an hour beforehand so everything is ice cold so you can see now the mousse is going to really really fine the meat basically became like a paste and just push it down a few times so that it's really really even that you don't have any chunks anymore if you removed all the connective tissue you don't have to put it through a strainer if you have a good blender but you will find in classic French cooking that they will tell you to put the meat through a strainer as well, just to remove any of that connective tissue. Now you add the cream. Once you add the cream, you have to be very careful. You cannot mix it too much because if you over whip that cream, it becomes like butter. So it's literally just blending it in, nothing else. So I have some morels, which I pre-soaked, or it could be truffles, or it could be herbs like thyme, rosemary, anything you really want to put in there. How much do you put in there? As much as you literally want, or as how much money you want to spend if you use truffles. And you chop them up really fine, make sure that they're really nice and even. So add some truffles to it as well. So I'm going to do morels and truffles. And then I add that to the mousse. And I pulse that all together. You can mix it in by hand, of course, too. Don't blend it too much because you don't want to break up the mushrooms too much. But that is a chicken mousse. And that you can fill, sort of, you can make a sausage out of that. Um, you could freeze it if you want to and today we're going to stuff it under the chicken so first take the chicken breast and then you try to make pockets underneath the skin but try not to create any holes on the sides because you want to fill that in really really nicely so just remove all the skin but let it be attached on the edges so you can see create a really big pocket there and the next thing is the chicken mousse gets in. If you have a piping bag, you could use a piping bag for that. And just add little by little. Move it down into those areas right you know, on the bottom of the breast. And that is a really nice way of cooking it because it will protect. So imagine now you protect your chicken meat or the chicken breast from underneath with the bone. From the top you protect it with the chicken mousse and because the chicken mousse has the cream in it. It's sort of the proteins will not harden as they usually do because you sort of separated the protein molecules with the cream and through that even if you overcook that slightly it's not going to harden it's not going to get like really dry because the cream you know will not allow the proteins to bind as they usually would so now just fill in as much as you can even it out Push it around and then before you roast it, you just brush it with a bit of butter. Make sure you be generous because you want to have a nice brown color. And like that, you can put it in a fridge for a few weeks, a few days, so you can even freeze it down for a few weeks if you want to. And then the next thing, it goes into the oven at 220 degrees fan force and you roast it for approximately 20 to 25 minutes, depending on how big your crown is. So during the time you can see how the chicken meat underneath the skin sort of really firms up nicely. The chicken skin browns up really nicely. And here we go, that is your chicken crown. So after you take it out, ideally let it rest for 10 minutes so that the meat juices can spread themselves nicely and then we will cut it up. And if you go into my online courses, you can find also all the different types of sauces you can serve. There is like a purplon, any sort of gravy type sauces, velouté's. And then to cut it, you just cut right down the middle bone and then you follow the bone of the chicken carcass and cut it off the carcass. And here we go, that's sort of a really nice traditional French dish, which you could, of course, use some really, really expensive chicken. And it's a great way to infuse a lot of flavor into your chicken meat as well. But I'll show you other ways in my online courses of how to just do that with herbs and dry fillings. 
and then let's cut the chicken breast and see how it turned out. And you can see the meat is really nice and juicy. If you can see that on the board, there's lots of juice coming out still. And the meat is not overcooked. And all you need now is some vegetables and a really nice sauce with it. And here we go. So look at that. There is your chicken breast stuffed with the chicken and morel mousse. And of course you could eat that cold too. So it would be really nice. Like it's, it's a bit like sort of a simple version of a terrine or palantine. And as I said, it's really nice cold and just absolutely amazing for a dinner party. There's other ways of stuffing chicken, like making a dondine or, you know, a Kiev cut. But again, I teach you that all in my online courses. So here we go. I hope, I hope you enjoyed that video and give it a try and leave me a comment if you have any questions. And as you could see, it was a pretty easy way to do that. And I look forward seeing you in one of my other videos. Now, thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed my video. If you did, please subscribe to my channel. Check out my online cooking school in the link below. I look forward to seeing you at one of my other videos.